doing this number because <laughs> that's a distraction to your presentation. <clears throat> and that's why we do what we do. Anything I missed, Don? Don, are you muted? You're not muted or anything. Oh, oh sorry, I muted my <laughs> mic because I got a, I got a call from somebody, so yeah. I muted my mic. Yeah, so. I flunked, I flunked a, a lip reading at school. <laughs> There's multiple ways to shut me up, I guess, is the point. But uh, no, thank you so very much. And uh, if there's no, I, does anybody have any questions? I think we, I think we got this down pretty well. Yeah, I just want to say that I, I, I prepare for between ten and eleven minutes. So. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. Yeah. In my experience, that's more conducive to people watching the whole thing. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's 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 all right. It's just that if you go get up to the fifteen minute mark, I'll give you a three minute notice. I won't. You know, as a <laughs> okay. I've run it fifteen times since yesterday. I won't. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Fairness. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna go turn my camera off and my and mute myself and go lurk in Facebook, mm -hmm. and uh, Jim is gonna gonna take you through this, and uh, I really appreciate you all being here and just pump up the energy. This is what people need and want. And uh, there's people out there who sorely need to hear what you have to say. Absolutely. And, and people have been very responsive and very positive on this. And uh, you really like your presentation because it'd be downloaded on uh, YouTube. I'll show you where the link is and all that and where, we're, where you'll be located at on the Speakers Pathway uh, website. I'll walk through the introduction for about two and a half minutes roughly. And uh, then I'll bring Sonia on and we just go from there. And it's, it's a, it's, it's a fun time. It really is this, your time will go quicker than you think, especially when you get caught up in the energy and you're delivering something, you know, so. Um, and the order, I, I, the order is Sonia, Sue, Sonia, and then Sue. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then Susan. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Jim, how is there any way that I can try um, sharing, I have an image that I want to share while I go through with the, the three yes, steps. Yes. You see the share button at the bottom? Yeah, I'll, I'll okay, you um, click on it and then you well, hit share like I'm doing here. Yeah, hold on just and, a second. Okay, yeah. all right. I'm yeah, yeah, no, it's just, it's just because I had my, um, I have to find it. Um, yeah. You know, because I'm not in full screen, so I'm I'm trying to see if I can stay and not. Ah, there it is. So share. So if I do okay. share and I share this, mm -hmm. does that work? Yeah. And when you get done, you see where it says stop share. Uh, but I'm not seeing it because we're all together. Are you seeing what I'm sharing? Yeah. Yes. A blue background with. Yes, and it's it's also, yeah. It's does it show the ability to be with what is? And does yep. it show up okay? Yeah. Yes, yes great. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Right. Okay, stop. <laughs> yeah, see, it's just that simple. And for you, yeah, uh, yeah I'm, I'll walk it through there because this is what I'm going to, got a few minutes here. I'll show you what I'm going to do first of all. Share my screen. I'm going to go up here to this tab here. This is Speaker's Pathway. Yada, da, da, da. I'll talk a little bit about this here. Complimentary gifts, TEDx training, and messages of inspiration, hope and support. Click there and I'll show you where all that is. And I got to offer the free complimentary course that Don offers about grow your business through speaking. Mm -hmm. And when I get ready to stop, I'll just hit the stop share. And Bing is just that simple. So if you've got something that you want to load up and, you know, just present, you certainly can. Any other yeah, questions? Yeah, mm -mm. Nope. Okay. Okay. Who brought the coffee? <laughs> I'm a coffee holic. Water. You know, in I the have morning, my water. Hey, that's cool. Because in the morning, the first thing I do, I get up and I drink some water while I, my coffee pot is on because it allows me to take the, the dog outside. Uh -uh. And, uh, because when you drink water, that's the most important thing to do in the first thing in the morning because you've been fasting all night. Mm -hmm. That's why we call the first meal of the day breakfast because you're actually breaking the fast. Mm -hmm. And um, I read that uh, a lot of the Orientals do that, and that's why they're, they have good blood pressure, lose weight, that sort of thing. And I've got a real good friend there in Phoenix, Arizona. He is real big on energy, and he's real big. He's kind of like a, uh, <laughs> I don't know what you'd call him. He's got this uh, machine that connects the nerves back together through 
um, it's not vibration, but it massages the deep tissue. And when someone has had it, um, a nerve injury, <clears throat> it'll help the nerves heal. And he's a huh. big fan. And he says, if you, if you got arthritis, which I've had, you know, you can see that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And, uh, he says, Jim, just start drinking water. <clears throat> he says, that's your best defense. And that, of course, and of course, I studied in the world of herbs for about 10 years. I know about oxalic acid, O-X-A-L-I-C, acid is found in all of our plants and things of this nature, and that attacks abnormal cells. So between the two, I still got what I got, but at least I don't, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't hurt? No. Yeah. I used, yeah. I used to feel it. I used to feel it, sure. But not that whole inflammation thing is so big right now, getting rid of inflammation in your body. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's a plague inside your body. I mean, I just really, yeah, you know, yeah. I tell you, it's uh, <laughs> the route that I've taken in my life has been because of the hand that I was dealt, you know, mm -hmm. and, you know, I got study the world of herbs for about 10 years. And one of the weird things that came down, I came down with a peptic ulcer here in, um, what was it, about 10 years ago. And uh, actually 11 years ago, because I'm 71, I was 60. I just turned 60 when I came down with a peptic ulcer. And I lost a lot of blood in that thing. That thing was like mm. a geyser. And they put me in the hospital and gave me five units of blood, gave me a, a double shot of protonics. It's a one-two type deal and it seals the ulcer. So they sent me home with, neck, with this Nexium. And I asked the nurse, I said, what's this for? It's for acid you know, reflux. I said, I don't suffer from that. Well, that's what we give all of our ulcer patients. So I started taking that stuff and I could not handle it. Every morning after I took it, I'd lay on the couch. I had a, you know, my stomach would hurt and feel nauseated. And I felt like I had a big band on top of my head just squeezing me down. I thought, man, I can't handle this stuff. And I went and got on the internet and researched it. and found out a peptic ulcer is caused by a bacteria called H. pylori. <laughs> and uh, it just worms its way through the lining of the stomach. And that's what creates the ulcer. And they say, <laughs> all strange all over. They says, what you do is that you eat a lot of red pepper. Now, to uh, what we think here in the states, if you eat red pepper with a with a stomach ulcer, you're setting your stomach on fire. But the um, red pepper actually um, re helps replace the lining in the stomach. Plus, it makes an environment there where the H. pylori cannot, you know, continue to thrive. Because one thing I learned in my study is that every single thing on planet Earth, be it cancer, arthritis. <laughs> from the molecular level all the way up, it's got to have nourishment to survive. You cut off the nourishment, it goes away. And um, anyway, when I'd go out to eat, I'd get <laughs> put red pepper and stuff like that, and people look at me like I was nuts. And uh, you get it from the water, this H. pylori. You get it from the water. It's, uh, yeah, you, and you get, when you have your blood tested, it's got to be, it's got to be tested specifically for that, for them to find it. And, I went through that too many years ago. Oh, had a lot of fun, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so that's to impress you with my knowledge of what I know. <laughs> <laughs> so I shared everything I know in the last two minutes. It's about 10.58 um, Central Time at 11 o'clock, uh, whatever time it is there at, uh, at the top of the hour, we'll go live. So at this point in time, I'm gonna mute the uh, mics and I'm gonna cut off the video so we get ready to go, and then I'll bring you on one at a time. So you- Thank you, Jim. Just, you bet. Thanks, Jim. Thank, thank, thank you, my you, pleasure. Jim. There we go.
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining another edition of Messages of Inspiration, Hope, and Support. This webinar series is brought to you by Speakers Pathway Coalition. And at speakerspathway.com, our website, not only can you find all of our previous speakers there of Messages of Inspiration and Hope, we also have some free gifts. Would it be okay if I share with you some free gifts that you can download right now? Let me share my screen with you, please. Okay, this is Speakers Pathway. Let me get up here at the home, home top of the home page there, speakerspathway.com. This is what some, some people of our members say about us. We have some free complimentary gifts. We also have some free TEDx training. I'll show you all of this in just a moment. Let me get all my stuff here out of the way. Here is the link to all of the messages of inspiration, hope, and support. All the speakers there. We'll click on that in just a moment. And how to grow your business through speaking. Dandy Don offers this course here. This is Don McGrath, our co-founder. And this is some of the topics uh, that we discuss. This is why we do what we do. This is the, the wild bunch, as I call us. Our executive training directors, Don and me at the top. And these are some of the testimonies. In addition to that, we also have a radio show on TuggyNet Radio. Now, getting back to the five simple steps to a kick butt TED Talk. This is a free action guide that Don created. He is a speaking geek. He's very excited about speaking. You can tell by the expression on his face. If that would be a benefit to you or someone you know, please get your action guide now. In addition to that, we offer, Don also offers his free, get your free course on how to grow your business through the speaking, especially with the virtual uh, industry that we're in right now, the network, the virtual stages, this could be very, very important in getting your message across. We also mentioned, saw some complimentary gifts. That's me and Don there. You can see we're on Toganet Radio. Let me take it up here to the top. Mr. Koji Samaldi, one of our executive training directors, he'll offer free audits across your social media platforms. He'll watch, review, and assess your video content. Bill Heinrich is a clarity guy. He's all about getting clar clarity in your mind. He's got a free gift there to supercharge your law of attraction. And in addition to that, he has a free book called, it's an ebook called Char uh, Clarity Has No a Story. It's at myfreebook.me, as in Mike Echo. Dr. Sony Jackson, that's a true picture of her personality. Wonderful lady. She will give you her content checklist for converting strangers into clients. Very, very valuable. Tamara Hunter, think about this one here right now. She has a celebration journal. It's been designed for cancer sufferers and people with other life-threatening diseases. Tamara is a cancer survivor. She created this journal to help someone in their daily life and living with, with, it, with any type of a life-threatening disease. So if you know of anyone that might can benefit from that, please let them know about it because it's free. Mr. Dustin Matthews, he goes over how to get out of debt, boost your active income, and start investing in passive income. Preston Martelli. Preston will go over and give you a complimentary brand audit of your brand because a lot of times we like our brand, but it may not be attractive. In addition to that, he will supply 90 action steps to get you to your next level. Now, the messages of inspiration and hope. When you click on that, it will come to this uh, web page here. This is some of the speakers here that we have. You can, I'll click on one of them in just a moment, but you can see that we've got a total of six pages there. Let's go to page number four, for example. And let's say if you want to hear um, Gloria Grace Rand, just click on her picture. And here is where you will see the MP4 file of her individual presentation. It's on a YouTube video. And this is a write-up about Gloria. Very fine lady. I really enjoyed having her on the show. And just a pleasure, pleasure to have her. I also mentioned we're on uh, Toganet Radio. And this is the home side of homepage of Toganet Radio. It's a live internet radio. We normally have one of our guests on the on the front page. If you click on Your Futures Now, the name of our show, that's me there. Over here on the right is all of our podcasts that we have there. And you can tune in and listen to any of the podcasts, download them, whatever. It's MP3 file. And just this past Friday, this lady here, uh, Boyd Lloyd Creechy, 
She talked about infection prevention in nursing homes. She really opened our eyes about the COVID-19 virus, how far behind a lot of people are in the nursing industry as far as nursing homes and things of this nature in dealing with uh, this disease. So that might be something of interest to you, but feel free to, to go to any of those uh, websites there. And I'm taking quite a bit of the time, so let me get going here. <laughs> our first guest is Sonia Wires. Let me cut Sonia's uh, camera on and unmute her. And she's gonna be talking about us today. Sonia, let me give you the spotlight here. There we go. And you're gonna be talking to us today about cultivating the ability to be with what is. That's so, right. So good. Thank you for coming. The stage is yours. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Speakers Pathway Coalition, for inviting me to share a message of hope and inspiration. And thank you who are watching. I know that your attention is in super high demand these days, and I want to be respectful of your time. The current circumstances are unique in that they are affecting a record number of people, and so it is crucial that we find effective ways to cope. In my experience, the very first tool to focus on is to cultivate the ability to be with what is. Let me say that again. Cultivate the ability to be with what is. So many of us look for our happiness on the outside, and so when the external circumstances are difficult, such as they are now, this becomes really hard. I'm going to tell you a story and then tell you some lessons I learned from it and guide you to apply them in your life. Does that sound good? So it's December 23rd, 2017. My parents have just arrived from their home in Belgium. We are spending Christmas together in my home, 50 miles south of Paris, with three of my four kids. My oldest daughter is in the Gambia with the Peace Corps. My dad walks into my house with bags in both hands, looking way down. He sighs. It's not possible anymore. We have to find a retirement home. I say to him, come in, Dad. Take off your coat and have a seat. Let's talk about it. My mom's cognitive decline was starting to be difficult to live with. She used to do the packing for these trips, and this time she was unpacking things as he was packing them. She was doing less and less at home. The list of difficulties was growing. My parents had come to my house probably more than 200 times since we had moved to this area 23 years ago, and I wondered if this might be their last trip. In 2018, my mom's cognitive decline continued to accelerate, taking a sharp dip at every absence of my dad. He had nine surgeries over eight months, seven of which under general anesthesia. I went to be with my mom, support my dad, and deal with what needed dealing with every time I could or whenever I was needed. In the middle of all that, on June 19th, 2018, on my 10th round trip that year, I moved my parents to a retirement home near me and my kids. My dad and I had counted down the days to the relief this would bring. Well, the adjustment was difficult. My mom didn't take well to the change, and my dad had more medical issues, including the discovery of cancer in his bladder the size of a small burger and the last of his nine surgeries to deal with that. On December 22nd, 2018, my mom died while I was visiting my daughter in the Gambia. That was our 2018. My dad was heartbroken. I was exhausted and shocked. You see, I'm a happiness expert, and that year I lived truly my most difficult times to date, yet they provided a fantastic opportunity to explore what happiness might mean in such circumstances, and as a result, they were also some of the most rewarding and meaningful I have lived. From all these experienced, I developed a no regrets three-step process for reconciling happiness and end of life when caring for our loved ones. But really, these three steps can be used to reconcile happiness and pretty much any insert your difficult circumstance here. The three steps are first, daring the truth. That's facing the truth of whatever is happening rather than denying it. Two, sincerely sharing that's intentionally engaging in truthful communication, and three, bravely letting go, which goes with truly recognizing what we have control over and what we do not. In another talk, I developed this in detail, but for today, I chose to focus on something that underlies these three steps, and that is the ability to be with what is. So whether this is new to you, vaguely familiar, or whether you're already a pro at this, I invite you to bring a beginner's mind and see what you can gain from actually going through the motions with me. So how do we be with what is? 
when what is can be shocking, scary, sad, or trigger an emotion that you don't like to feel. See if you can bring to mind something like that. We will go through three steps together. So let me put up the image to go with that. Okay, so the first step is to take stock. So ask yourself, what is going on that I'm having a hard time with? This may seem obvious, but so often we get engulfed in our reaction and forget what we are reacting to. So take stock of what exactly it is that you're having a hard time with. With regards to the pandemic, is it the increased uncertainty? Is it the fact that you're cut off from your social ties? Or are you or one of your loved ones personally touched by the virus? Maybe you've lost your job. What is it for you? Now ask yourself, and what is my reaction to this? So here, identify what you're feeling, what sensations in your body, what emotions. You might be sad, angry. You might feel tense or shaking or distracted. What are you feeling? The second step is to cope. So first, let's breathe into it. So please join me in a short breathing exercise. If you can, sit comfortably and maybe close your eyes. We're going to start by blowing out all the air in our lungs through our mouth and then keep our mouth open and let our lungs fill, like this. <sighs> now find your normal breathing rhythm. And while you're breathing like this, find your diaphragm. If you don't know where it is, it is just below your perhaps hypoth hypothetical bra strap. So right here. So put your thumb on your diaphragm. Now we're going to take three slow breaths. I'll explain first and then we'll do it together. So we will inhale slowly through our nose, filling our lungs as much as we can, and then exhale slowly through our mouth as though through a straw, emptying our lungs as much as we can. The thumb is there so that you know you're doing it right. You should feel the push under your thumb as you inhale and then release and then feel the release as you exhale. So let's do it. So first let's blow out all our air. Now inhale, pushing against your thumb. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Most people I do this with report that they feel more relaxed instantly. Some need to do it again. Feel free. You can obviously do this whenever you feel the need. It doesn't solve anything, but it takes the edge off of what you're feeling, and it may open you up to the second part of coping, which is mindset. So we have a situation, and we react to it. Can we do something about this situation? Sometimes we can, and sometimes we cannot. Sometimes it's not clear. Take some time if you need to, and really clarify what about the situation you have control over, and what about it you do not. It is a critical aspect of our mindset to be really clear about that. And regardless of your answer, you have some choices, and this is a third st step. One choice is whether to open yourself up to feeling or not. Please ask yourself now, how much do I allow myself to feel what I feel? In general, but also in the situation you're facing now. There's ample evidence that trying to ignore or suppress emotions only increases their grip on us. So if you are prone to the tyranny of positivity, I really invite you to reconsider. True peace can only come if we can truly let be what is. The other choice you have is what you will do about all this. So depending on what you're facing, options might include take a warm bath, refinance a loan, 
call someone to settle a disagreement, spend time with a loved one, look for a new job. I can't possibly name all the possibilities, but make sure you see what you want to do about the situation that you are in. The key about all this is to cultivate. It's not really like riding a bike. In early August, 2019, I took my dad to Belgium for a few days to visit some of the people he cared about the most and that he had left with the move. We enjoyed meals with friends, with his siblings, and he even won a tournament with his bridge partner of 26 years. There was so much love, friendship, and warmth. My dad was beaming and I had a great time too. I was already planning the next time. But less than a week after we returned, my dad's control scan showed metastases of his cancer in multiple organs. And six weeks later, on September 29th, 2019, my beloved dad passed away. But thank goodness I had cultivated the ability to, the ability to be with what is. It has made a huge difference in grieving the loss of both my parents nine months apart. And it is really helping me to deal with the current circumstances too. So you go and cultivate your ability to be with what is. And I promise you that it will help you and that it will get easier. Thank you. I got one word to say. Wow. Thank you. Your message really does resonate with me and I know a lot of other people, probably the other two ladies that's here today too, because Right now, I'm going through an emotional roller coaster. We have a beloved dog that we just love dearly. Mm. He has good days, bad days. He's got congestive heart failure. And it's been an emotional roller coaster for us. And I really appreciate, you know, you bringing to my attention that, you know, I've got to be with what is on the thing. I cannot, you know, change some certain things, but to enjoy the moment. And uh, our attitude is we're just going to love him to death, you know, mm. and, um, just let him, you know, that, that's what we, that's what we do in life. And that's the way we should do it. But I just wanted to, you know, say thank you so much for your wonderful message. It's really blessed me and means a lot to me. And I just want to say, thank you. Before thank you, you go, thank you. Before you go, would you be so kind as to share your website and also your email address so someone can get in touch with you, please? Of course. So my website was on the image that I shared, but if you didn't get a chance to write it down, it's uh, three W's, Udokima. So that's E-U-D-O-K-I-M-A.com, Udokima.com. It means to prosper, to flourish. And I always forget the third one, but it, it has a meaning. It's a Greek word. <laughs> um, and uh, my email is just Sonia, so my first name, is S-O-N-I-A, at udokima.com. And also on the page, like once my video is up, there should be in the text below the video, there should be the link. But if you want to go see, I have a five uh, steps to experience your true happiness guide that I can offer you on my website. So it's udokima.com forward slash E-N for English, forward slash experience hyphen your hyphen true hyphen happiness forward slash. So there you can uh, sign up for, you can get your free guide. Well, thank you so very much for sharing that. You had a wonderful message. We're so thankful that you chose to be with us today. And most importantly, to take time out of your busy schedule to share your message with people that like me really need to hear it. Thank you again. Really do appreciate it. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. And please hang around and watch the rest of the show. And ladies and gentlemen, at this time, uh, let me uh, do a little techie work here behind the scene. Our next guest is going to be Sue. And let me turn her, uh, my muter there and NASA turn on her. There she is. And let me cut off this. There we go. Sonia, thank you so much. Sue, I'm going to pronounce your name correctly. I hope, and if not, I know you're, you're such a wonderful lady. You'll forgive me. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Sue Tabaka. Uh, Kritzek, is that right? Kritzek? Excellent. Excellent. Really? Yeah. That's the first time I've done it today. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going to be talking to us about everyone needs a cheerleader. And sometimes that cheerleader is you. You got to do it. So I'm really looking forward to listening to your message. Let me cut off my video and mute my mic and Thank the stage you. is yours. 
Yes, everyone does need a cheerleader. And I would like you to think about the fact that even as you were being born, you needed a cheerleader. So think about your mom in the delivery room and maybe your dad and maybe some other significant person standing there. Before you came into this world, your mother was cheering you on. Come on, come on, come on. Your dad might have been cheering on your mom, helping her to help you come into the world. And so I want you to think about that. Now, most of the time, when people think about cheerleaders, they think about the stereotypical cheerleader, someone from high school or college that was the rah-rah kind of person. And I had a good friend in high school, Pam Wasnicki, who went to elementary school with me as well as high school. And she was actually the cheerleading captain. She was beautiful, she was vivacious, she was energetic, and I wanted to be like her. I wanted to be a cheerleader. I wanted to get out in front of the football squad or the basketball squad, and I wanted to be the one looking into the stands and saying, let's go, let's go, kind of thing. Um, I have another good friend, who is a former colleague, Kareen Kiefoffer, and she is the epitome of a cheerleader, even as an adult. She's a teacher and she stands in front of her classes and she motivates them. So as I started this, I asked you to think about the experience of needing a cheerleader even before you were born. And most of us don't remember needing that. So right now, what I'd like you to do is close your eyes, unless you're driving. Close your eyes and I would like you to think about seeing a newborn for the first time. Whether you're a mother, father, grandmother, grandfather, aunt, uncle, sister, brother, or even if you're someone who has never seen a newborn child, you may have seen a newborn kitten or a newborn puppy. And what I want you to think about as your eyes are closed is what that person or animal looked like. They were helpless. They knew nothing. They had a helpless start in life. And they were learning as they grew. They needed to know how to sit, how to eat, how to talk, how to walk. So now open your eyes. Now I want you to think of being the person who's there, catching that little girl as she takes her first steps or being there holding your breath as that little boy tries to pull himself up on the edge of the coffee table. And I want you to think about what was going through your mind as you were watching that. Sometimes you were there cheering that person on, yay, they took their first step and you really want them to keep walking so that you don't have to carry them everywhere. And we learn that as cheerleaders, we are constantly looking at people, at kids, learning new things, whether they are learning how to hit a goal or yeah, make a goal in soccer, catching a fish, playing the piano, you get the picture. Okay, so think about the number of times that someone has cheered you on, that someone has praised you, that someone has given you support and it has helped you move forward. Now I want you to stop and think, does that ever stop? Does the need 
to be supported and cheered on ever really stop? Do you still have someone in your life that praises you, encourages you, cheers you on, supports you? For some of you, you may be fortunate enough to have a spouse, a significant other, a best friend, a parent, someone who is always there for you, cheering you on and letting you know that you're smart and you're fantastic and you're so important and you're so successful. And they may be sounding sarcastic like the spouse that says, oh yes, honey, you know, is there anything else I can do for you other than the laundry, the cooking, the child care, um, cleaning, while you're out there making those fabulous uh, millions that we don't know when they're coming, you know, but they're still there and they're still supporting you and they're still encouraging you because they know it means something to you. And even though many of us might be in a situation where we're better off than the tuna and ramen days of college, or living paycheck to paycheck, we still feel the pressure to do great things. And sometimes we don't feel very great about ourselves. Sometimes we just don't feel that we can do it. And what does that mean if you have someone that loves you and encourages you and you still have those feelings? Those feelings that say, I really don't know if I can do this. I really don't know if I'm good enough. Those fears and those doubts that creep in. And what about the fact that you, you think, I've got a college degree, I should be smart enough, I, I've done this, I've done that. Why can't I do this one thing? Why can't I get past this block? If you think about it even further, you know that the more you advance and grow, you don't ever really stop needing encouragement or praise. You don't outgrow that need for a cheerleader in your corner. As a mother, I encouraged and praised our two daughters as they were babies, when they held themselves up for the first time, said their first words, took their first steps, went to school, learned, went to college. I mean, I remember teaching them how to read and write when they participated in group activities and sports and all of that stuff. I supported them as they had girlfriend issues, boyfriend issues, marriage issues, parenting issues. They're both adults, guess what? I'm still there for them. I still support them, but I'm not with them every single day. As a teacher, I taught for 34 years. As a teacher, I encouraged, praised, supported my students by listening to them and their stories and trying to remind them that they could be the best. I remember being a volleyball coach, working with beginning volleyball players at the seventh grade level. And I would teach my whole team to be supportive of each other. Because at the end of the season, when the one girl who could not even serve the ball across the net finally did it, she knew that that whole team would be out there cheering for her. They'd be encouraging her. And whether she played volleyball as a team sport ever again, she walked away from that experience feeling that there were people who knew that she could do it. And so at the end of this, I got to thinking, boy, I have been a cheerleader of sorts. I have been an encourager, a praiser. I have done all that. But who's done it for me? Poor me, right? Who's done it for me? There were many times at the end of a day of teaching that I would come home after listening to the stories and 
and the problems of middle school aged kids. And my own daughters might have been that same age. And I would think, boy, why don't I have someone sitting here listening to me and saying, you know what, Sue, you can do this. You've done it. You're strong. And I think about the number of people that I know who have left the security of one job for another, that as they've become adults, they force themselves to step out and do something that was in their heart to do. And yet that fear was there. And sometimes they reached out and other times they didn't. And some of them would find groups of like-minded people and they would say, you know, am I okay? Am I doing this right? And someone would say, you know, if you ever have any questions, call me. I'm here for you. I'll support you. Needing encouragement, needing support and praise is not something we ever stop needing. And I remember giving a portion of this speech to an audience where as I looked out, I could see some of the people sitting back going, you know, yeah, I don't need praise. I don't need encouragement. And I taught with a number of people who would say things like that. I don't need to hear that I'm a good teacher. I don't need to hear that I'm doing something great. And that may be true. Some people may not need to hear it, but guess what? When they hear it, it sure feels good. It feels good to have somebody validate what you're doing. So now I want you to think about this. How do you capture that power that's within you? How do you get to be that cheerleader in your corner? Well, you do it by finding out what makes you, you. What makes you unique? What makes you fascinating? What makes you stand out from the other person? And then you start working what I call that confidence muscle. So when those doubts come in, when those fears, when that, oh, I said I would do this. Why did I say I would do this? I can't really do this. When that begins to happen, you just say, eh, I think I can do it. You practice that confidence muscle. And here's another thing that I would like you to think about. When you find out what it is that makes you unique, what it is that makes you you, you use the power of words and you implant them in your brain. So when you hear words like interesting, you sometimes hear people say, oh, that's interesting but you sometimes hear people say, that's really interesting. And when you look at it as the good interesting, instead of the, oh, that's interesting kind of thing, implant that one in your brain. Or someone is unique or fascinating. So what happens is you retrain your brain to think these things and what happens is that when you find out what those traits are that build your confidence, that make you feel your best, you're doing what I encourage people to do, which is practice using that confidence muscle. And that's your inner cheerleader. It's also your superpower. It's also the power that you use to go forward every day, whether it's with your family, whether it's at your business, whether it's with your friends, it's the thing that keeps you moving forward. So what I would like to encourage you today is find out what your strengths are, what your advantage is, write them down, implant them in your brain, use them as your 
cheerleader. Use them as your superpower. So when you're sitting at your desk or you're crawling in bed at night and can't sleep because you didn't get something done, go ahead and use those words. Tell yourself that you are good and tell yourself what you accomplished and tell yourself that you know you've got this. Just like that cheerleader who stood in front of that crowd and said, Jim, I know you're gonna make this free throw. Let's go, Jim. Okay, I know that you can do this. The business that I have, which I am going to mention as I leave you, is called Your Fascination Factor. And the word fascination means that it is something with magnetic appeal. It's something that pulls people to you. And so what I want you to do is think about what it is that pulls people to you. My name is Sue Tabaka Kritzik, and I am a coach at Your Fascination Factor, and I will give you more information so that you can contact me and see what I can offer you. I actually have an online course that is a short little course that digs deep into who you are and how to practice that confidence muscle. So thank you very much for being with me and have fun being your own cheerleader. And guess what? You don't even need to buy a special uniform. You got it. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Sue, for your wonderful message. And a couple of times there, you brought back some memories in my life. When I was an instructor in the military, I was an instructor for 12 years. And I'm just going to share a funny little story about me for about 10 seconds, maybe less, hopefully. <laughs> but my very first time I instructed a class, I did not know the equipment. I was struggling with the, with the program of instruction. And I practiced that thing and practiced that thing. And I put all the emotion I could in that thing. And I thought, gosh, I am awful. I mean, this is horrible, you know? And the next year we had some students that attended the class that I taught and they immediately called my name. I looked over there and they said, well, you were the best instructor we had last year. And I thought, well, I guess the rest of them really did suck. You know? <laughs> but it's so easy for us to beat ourselves up, especially in this day and time. People are questioning themselves. They're, you know, they're kind of beating themselves up unnecessarily. And I love your message about retraining your brain mm -hmm. because turn on to life and turn on the light. And that's going to be a subject that Susan's going to be talking to us in a few minutes. But yeah, it's, I tell you, your message is so, so timely for people. Again, before you go, please, would you be kind enough to repeat your website and your email address in case someone wants to get in touch with you and say, tell me more. Yes. My website is yourfascinationfactor.com and my email address is sue t k at yourfascinationfactor.com. Good. Thank you so very much. And again, I want to personally thank you on behalf of everyone listening for taking time out of your busy schedule to share this wonderful message with us because you know, the messages that I hear every day, I have the privilege of hearing, I need to hear them. So, you know, it's just, in your message is just spot on with me. It brought back some memories. It also reminded me to, you know, pat myself on the back once in a while because we all need to be encouraged. There's no question about that. And thank you again. We do. Yes, we do. Absolutely. Thank you, Jim. I appreciate it. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Hope you have a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of the show. I will. Let, thank you. Let, let me cut on Susan's camera here and do a little techie work back here because normally when I'm on the radio, I've got Ben Horlander and Ben is always the one that's taking care of all this uh, geek stuff for me. And I tell you, I really do appreciate him. I really do miss him. And Susan, let me make you the spotlight there. Put you the spotlight. There we go. And Susan <laughs> Mason Apps, you're going to be talking to yes. us about seven magical life principles to awaken your inner light. Am I correct on that, please? Yes, you are. And Good. we're gonna put a, a little spin on it to make it really applicable to the times that we find ourselves in here today. 
Good, good. Well, let me shut off my video and mute my mic and the stage is yours. Thank you so much, Jim. Really grateful to be here today. As Jim said, my name is Susan Mason Apps and I'm here bringing all my background to this topic today. I come originally out of a scientific background as a biologist. I'm also an energy healer and um, a spiritual practitioner or teacher as well. So I bring all these pieces together in what we're going to talk about today. And so much of what we're facing today is about the unknown. And a lot of us are questioning, when's the normal coming back? What's our new, new normal going to be? Is there actually a new normal to come? And the confusion that we're all dealing with in the stress and the fear is a very real thing. So the seven magical life principles, I want to focus them specifically on the times that we're in here. And these principles arose out of my own personal life journey, my own spiritual journey, the digging into who am I, like Sue was just talking about, who am I really underneath all of this? And what really makes me tick? So the first principle that I really stumbled upon, and it was really a principle that I just started applying in my life. I just, it was just showing up over and over again. And that was this statement. It's all perfect dot, 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 somewhere. Which when you're in that moment where nothing is perfect, there's a, a comfort that comes and perhaps even a sense of humor when you add the dot, dot, dot somewhere to understand that maybe there's something bigger in this world than us, that we can really lean into our faith. And despite the fact, whatever that is for you, and despite the fact that we're in difficult times to remember when we're completely uncomfortable, when nothing feels perfect, to entertain the idea that somewhere, not where we are, but somewhere, it's perfect. Because there are no mistakes in the bigger picture of things. So from my soul's perspective, for example, what's going on right now is likely quite perfect. Because we're going to have the experiences that allow us to move into a new space, a new normal, a new possibility. And that's where principle number two can come in. And that is when I don't know, I imagine that I do. So we're in a situation right now where we don't know what's coming next. But what if we dropped into the imagination space and ask that question. What if, not what if, but what if, what if something really amazing could grow out of this? What if the fact that mother nature has cleaned up air pollution and water pollution and so much else that was wrong in the world is being corrected slowly? in just this few weeks since humanity has gone down. So what if there was something bigger and better that we could imagine and begin to create new innovative ways of approaching our life? What if? And that's, I think, asking that question, what if, from the place of curiosity and possibility. I think that maybe more than anything, can lift our spirits in a moment when nothing is feeling perfect and nothing feels okay. And, you know, you can say, yeah, but that's just not how it works. That's not how life works, whatever. Well, my third principle is believing is seeing. And, you know, 
so much of life is about, yeah, when I see it, I'll believe it. And really these times when we're in the unknown, when we are stressed out, when new potentials could be sitting right on the horizon waiting for us to grasp them, imagining dropping into, I believe I can see some new awesome potential for our world, that there's more than what we've been shown. That's a really powerful, powerful place to be. And in these times, you know, there's so much going on out there that doesn't feel okay in here, inside. And it can really feel so overwhelming. I know I'm living this world too. I try to limit the amount of news I watch, but when I am taken over by looking at what's going on outside, I drop into this, this principle of everything out there in the world is actually a symbolic reflection of things going on within me. So not feeling um, uh, safe from, you know, this virus. I can look at, you know, am I feeling safe in life in general? And I can look at, take the symbolic expression that's out there in the world and make it something personal because I don't have control over the world, but I do have some degree of impact over my own personal world. So to step back and say, okay, there's craziness going on out there. I'm going to address my personal craziness. And that leads naturally right into the fifth principle. And that is I'm responsible for my thoughts, my feelings, and my actions. Nobody else's and nobody else is. So there's no one to blame. There's no one to hand things off to. What if we could step back and say, I have these feelings and they're mine and I'm going to own them. I'm responsible for them. I'm responsible for my actions. I'm responsible for the thoughts in my head. What if I step back and say, huh, if I really was, would I still be thinking this nasty negative thought or would I replace it with something much more empowering and uplifting and joyful. We have that choice. And then perhaps being trained, educated in my life as a biologist, I think this is the one that perhaps surprised me the most when it showed up in my awareness. And that is, I am a part of nature. We all are. Yet we've been living life in our old normal as though we're not, as though nature is just this thing that is disposable, that is irrelevant, that is somehow inconsequential. And I really hope that our new normal puts the fact that we are a part of nature front and center. Can you imagine going outside in the morning when the sun's coming up and the dew's on the grass and put your toes in the grass and you're just like, oh, I'm home. This is part of my home. I belong to nature and nature belongs to me and I honor and respect that both ways. I think that would be a really cool experience. And then finally, the seventh principle is I love myself unconditionally. And granted, we don't start off loving ourselves unconditionally for the most part in this world. I think for the most part, we're trained not to by what goes on in the world around us. Yet, to come back to that place of saying, what if I loved myself unconditionally? Would I think that thought? 
would I do that thing? Would I put myself at the end of my own to-do list or priority list? Maybe not. Again, putting the what if I loved myself unconditionally is a great way to bridge from where we may be at the beginning to where we can head to when we do fully love ourselves unconditionally. Each one of those, and I'll just briefly run through them again. It's all perfect, dot, 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 somewhere. When I don't know, I imagine that I do. That opens up the creativity, like poof. Making room for the idea that believing is seeing. To understand that what we see out there in the world is a reflection of something within us. And it's our opportunity to explore that and find that for ourselves. And number five, the idea that I'm responsible for my thoughts, my feelings, and my actions. Nobody else's and nobody else is. That, I could talk for an hour on that one. <laughs> um, and the idea that you're a part of nature, reconnect to nature and plug back in to the real energy, not the processed electrical stuff. And then loving ourselves unconditionally. What a huge opportunity will be waiting for us when we can do that. So I'd like to take a few minutes now to kind of expand on these ideas and integrate them into something that is really near and dear to my heart. And that is, can you imagine a world without fear? Or put another way, can you imagine a world where we really based things in love? Can you imagine that when you got up to try something new, the first thought wasn't, oh my God, I'm gonna be so embarrassed. What if the first thought was, wow, I wonder how I'm gonna do it this. I can hardly wait till I can practice and get really good. There's so many subtle fears that we don't even acknowledge as fears that infiltrate and wind their way through our life. And we build a life basically on a foundation of fear, competition and separation. Being separate, oh my God, I'm afraid I'm alone. Ah, it's a fear. Oh my God, I'm not good enough. I'm not gonna be able to compete in the marketplace or you know, wherever it is in life. I'm just not good enough. What if we could invite fear to step aside? What if as part of our new normal, evolving ourselves into something bigger and better than what we were prior to this event? What if inviting fear to move aside could make way for our true nature? And our true nature is love. Our true nature is kindness and caring. We've all seen it happening around us, I'm sure pictures in the windows of people's houses with beautiful drawings and signs outside of restaurants, one down the road from me that says, you know, be nice to each other, take care of each other. So we'll just bring it back all together. The seven magical life principles can support you in your day-to-day -day life to elevate yourself to living the life that maybe your heart has been asking you to live. And these principles can support you without judgment to step into helping to create your new normal. Thank you so much.
That's an amazing uh, message that you shared because I definitely resonated with it because I'm still working on this and it took me a long time to learn it. You've got to love yourself first before you can love others. And in the process, in the process, I learned that, you know, or I share with people that can you imagine what kind of a world this world would be if everyone had the heart of a family dog, <laughs> Un unconditional love. I mean, just yes. unconditional love. And you talk mm -hmm. about nature. If it's okay, I share a little uh, story. Yes. With you. Yes. We, we'd been, we'd been in the middle of a drought for two years and I was still running my manufacturing business. And I got up one morning, I had some problems and I was, you know, they were grinding at me from the night. And so I got out early in the morning. It was before first light and I'm drinking a cup of coffee. I'm standing there enjoying myself being miserable. <laughs> and a clear thought came to my mind. Wasn't no booming voice or anything. If it was a booming voice, it'd be like, Hey, Moron, it's JC. Me and Bill, Bill, I need to talk to you. <laughs> but a clear thought came to my mind that early morning says, do you hear the birds singing? And I stopped and I listened to the morning birds. And like I said, we'd been in a drought for two years. And as I listened to the birds, the other thought that came to my mind is even they will sing in the middle of a drought. And it really brought me down to reality. Mm -hmm. And your message there about, you know, you're part of nature and, you know, and love yourself and all that. I was just picking up on that left and right. And we're almost out of time. But before we go, would you be so kind as to share your website and your email address with us, please? Yes, thank you. My website is MagicalLifeInstitute.com. And my email address is Susan at MagicalLifeInstitute.com. And uh, when you go to the website, there is a freebie, which is the seven magical life principles so that you can have them to support you in your day to day life in a in your specific way that they can support you. Thank you. Well, so thank much. you. So well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm gonna cut the other cameras on right, right back on for just a moment here and give these ladies a chance to at least uh, be recognized. And uh, let's see, Sue is there and so is Sonia. And I just want to personally thank all three of you for your powerful messages, your wonderful presentations. And ladies and gentlemen, all of these wonderful ladies and their powerful message will be available at speakerspathway.com. Just look for the messages of inspiration, hope and support there on the front page. You'll be able to listen to their presentation. You'll be able to get in touch with them. Most importantly, share these wonderful messages with someone that you know. That's part of being love and sharing love because this is, what, this is what we do. And this is why Susan is here. This is why Sue is here. And this is why Sonia is here. So ladies, thank you so very, very much for a wonderful day. You made my day. I know you made other people's day. I'm gonna give you a chance to wave goodbye because we're out of time. <laughs> we gotta go. Bless you. Thank you for thank being you. here. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you.